Hi, I'm Doug Milne. I'm an Immersion Days educator at the National Canal Museum, and I'm going to explain a little bit about buoyancy. And the point of this discussion is to find out why we used canal boats in the first place. Why not just load up the heavy stuff we wanted to move from the Poconos down to Philadelphia on a horse and cart? Well, the reason for that is that they needed to move a lot of heavy weight. And the easiest way they discovered to move that weight was by water. The reason for that is that friction is greatly reduced on the water, and so you can move a lot more weight over water than you can using the same amount of force by moving things with a horse and cart. Buoyancy is basically broken down into a couple of different things. One is area. You find area by uh, multiplying length times width. The other is density. How heavy is an object based on its size? So, I have two objects here. I have a brick made from clay, brick, and a boat made from wood. This boat is not hollow, it's a solid piece of wood, but it's still made out of wood. Now when I ask people which of these two things is heavier, usually they guess the brick is heavier than the boat. Is it gonna float or sink? A lot of people guess sink, sometimes people guess float, but the fact of the matter is it sinks like a stone because basically it is one. Whether this brick is solid or it's got holes in it, it's gonna sink if I put it in the water because its density is too great for the water to support. Now, we know that this boat weighs almost a pound more than the brick. Let's find out. If I put this boat in the water, it floats exactly the way you would expect a boat to float. And the reason for that is that there are two things in play. One is that the material it's made from is less dense than the material that the brick is made from. The other thing that is in play is that the boat is clearly a good deal larger than the brick. It covers more surface area. Its length times width, its area, is larger than the brick. So, what we discovered over time, what was discovered back in the old days, was that if you can make a boat big enough and broad enough, you can load it with so much weight that the friction of the water, which is a great deal less than the friction created by moving wheels over land or a heavily laden cart, uh, is such that you can move much greater weights using boats laden with whatever you're trying to move uh, than you can move over land using a cart and horses. In fact, 100 tons of material could be loaded onto a 20-ton boat and could be pulled by only two mules. And that is why we had canal boats. Thanks for joining us today, and I hope you'll join us for our next video. My name again is Doug Milne and it's been a pleasure visiting with you.